Hello, everyone. Welcome to Leaders Lounge Live. We are so excited today because we have an incredible person here who's going to share with us her expertise. And it's a real privilege to have her because she speaks all over the world. And her name is Alyssa DeVere. She is the Chief Confidence officer with the American Confidence Institute. She's the co-founder. She's authored six books. We're actually going to be speaking about one of them today called Kick-Ass Confidence. She is an executive and an entrepreneur, and we're just in for a real treat today with what she's going to share with us, and we're going to do our best to answer all your questions, so please feel free to pop in the comment box and ask your questions and we will get to them. So Alyssa, welcome to Leaders Lounge Live. Thank you so much for taking time to be here with us. And I really wanted to bring you on because I truly believe so many of us, even if it's just like a small bit, we feel confident most of the time, but if we go for that interview, if we go for that important business meeting, our confidence maybe gets shaken or we're, we're not performing at our best because something is shaking our confidence and I think a lot of people don't fully understand it. And I got introduced to you because I was seeking and searching and had to go for a very important interview a while back and uh, it was at a time in my life where I maybe wasn't at my best and I was being thrown into an environment that was way above my experience. And so I kind of wanted to research it and I found what you do and what the American Confidence Institute does. And it just thrilled me that I could learn more about the research behind it and how I could change it for myself. And that's why I enrolled in your coaching program and learned so much from you. So thank you for bringing this work to the world. And I can't wait for you to share more about yourself and about your work and, and everything you do. Oh, Jody, thank you. It just gave me goosebumps and lots of confidence up. So thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Can you share with people a little bit about what you do and the American Confidence Institute? Absolutely. Well, the Confidence Institute really is focused on research. So we collect and we conduct research that's related to confidence. So anything that kind of touches it, and of course it's a very big scope of work, but um, we really want to bring some quantitative data and evidence to this issue. You know, as a coach and, and other coaches that have been through our coaching certification program, that it is, uh, coaching is a little amorphous as it is, but you can get a coaching client and it can be a, a raft of different issues and things that you'll be tackling. We really want to focus on what makes people confident, why, and how do you make people who need more confidence to be more confident. So uh, some of the techniques that we use are literally the same techniques that professional athletes and military use. We work with executive coaches who really bring forward tools that are proven, tried and true. So we're kind of that quantitative uh, brain trust, if you will, about what really works, what helps people to take their confidence from whatever point it is to the next level. And um, something that you said I, I don't want to lose because I think it's going to be a recurring theme in our conversation is that constant confidence is not consistent. It's not something that, you know, you stay at a level at all times. I mean, here's the reality. Life happens and it could be a job interview. Maybe you're in transition. I talk to a lot of people who are between jobs and, you know, their confidence goes whew, into a vacuum. Maybe it's a, a life issue in terms of relationship or somebody's sick. I mean, anything can happen and it directly impacts your confidence. So part of what we try and do at the Institute is really help people understand that confidence will ebb and flow. Um, it's not going to be consistent across all things, but there is a way that you can control it and really be um, much more comfortable with the way that confidence should work, does work, because I think one of the big myths is that even the people who seem confident have ebbs and flows and are not consistent. Well, and something interesting you said there that I think a lot of people are gonna wanna know about and learn is that we can control it. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, and that word control kind of gets people a little nervous at times, right? You know, it's not this absolute kind of driver control, but what really I mean by control is that what often causes us to lose confidence is that we're worried about something. 
right? We're worried that maybe somebody's not going to like us, that we're not going to belong. And so we go back into looking at some of the positive psychology, particularly Abraham Maslow's pinnacle work, where that level of belonging, and we need to feel connected. We need to feel that we have a purpose. We need to feel that we have some kind of a interact or interactive role in the bigger scheme of things, right? Whether it's with your family or a company um, or a club, we need that belongingness, that connectedness. And when that doesn't happen or we feel that we may not be able to achieve it, we cannot feel confident. We can't go up Maslow's hierarchy. And it turns out now that we know more about the way the brain works, all our analytical and rational thinking is in the front of our brains. So the, the part in the very back, the brain stem, which is, goes back to cavemen, right? When they were um, literally, that was the first part of the brain that was developed. It was the part of the brain that made the decision for them, should they charge the boar or run away, <laughs> you know, fight or flight. And so what happens is we lose control in the front part of our brain where all that logic and rationalization is and where we kind of can self-talk to ourselves to say, hey, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? I don't make the club or I don't make the sorority or whatever it might be. And we lose the control there and it falls into our panic zone. And it's when we panic or maybe even just get a little bit nervous, that's when we start to do things that we may regret. It's when we start to feel bad about ourselves. And subsequently it's that fear, even though it may not feel necessarily like terrifying fear, it's a little bit of that worry and concern that just takes our confidence room right down into that vortex. I thought it was amazing what you said. I, I read it somewhere and you shared it that uh, the kryptonite to confidence is our need to belong. That is so powerful. It is. And I, I also like to tell people that the opposite of confidence is not insecurity, you know, because you can feel insecure about certain things in your life and still be a confident person. You know, I like to think of myself as a generally confident person and what I do. But Jody, if you ask me to demonstrate a cartwheel right now, I am completely insecure that I would. <laughs> fall on my butt and make a fool out of myself, right? And I'm kind of okay with that. So, you know, the, the definition of insecurity is not really polar opposite to confidence. What's opposite to confidence is guilt. And the reason I say that is because we worry about something and then we don't do it. We don't align with something that's important to us, to our values. And subsequently, it's that fear or that almost um, shame that we don't, pursue what we really want to, what we know we're capable of, that wears on our confidence. So when you're doing something that you're like, I can do this, I want to do this, I'm all good, this is something that's important to me, your confidence is here, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, well, maybe I'll fall in my butt, or maybe I won't be as good as I think, or maybe they won't like me, and you start to get all that nice stuff again, back in the brainstem, the brainstem's starting to shake, your pulse is going, your breath, you know, you're short of breath, because all that's in that brainstem function, right, that's where it's all controlled. Start to, and meanwhile, your confidence is following, right? It's going down. So as a result, you're like, oh, you know, why did I allow myself to, 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 to not do that? I really wanted to go on that expedition, or I really wanted to apply that at school or that job. Why didn't I tell the recruiter this thing? So as a result, again, it kind of self-perpetuates into some guilt. So it's an interesting way of thinking about what confidence really is. And I, maybe we can just define for everyone what the definition of confidence is, because you, you define confidence and core confidence. Right. Well, I guess, you know, one of the things I want, I've been dying to ask you is you have people come to you all the time and they say, Jody, I need your coaching help. I don't feel very confident. So like before I give kind of a clinical definition, I'd love you to comment what, like, what do you see as people defining in their own world as a lack of confidence? Like what is missing from their life? It's interesting uh, because I don't think people are aware that they they wouldn't say I lack the confidence, but there's something holding them back from playing a bigger game. Mm. And, and then it kind of perpetuates in I'm not doing this in my business and they don't know why or they're not advancing in their career and it comes back to confidence and their core confidence. And so the, I actually think most of us don't know that we're struggling with a confidence piece in our career, in our business, but often that is the core and the root of what it is. It's not that we don't know how to do something. It's about how we feel or how we think about ourselves. Right. So perfect. And thank you for sharing that because 
it, again, I'm going to expand it in terms of this word of values, right? So we have in our heads, we create based on what we've learned, what we what we like, uh, kind of almost a, 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 a boundary, right? These are the things that I feel are important. So if I want to do something in my business, I say it's important to me that I do that in my business. My business is important and so forth. And it's when you don't do those things that you've set as, you know, within that boundary of it's important to me that you don't do it and your confidence is low. So it's not necessarily that your confidence is not causing, allowing you to do it, is that you have decided for whatever reason, I'm not gonna do it, and then your confidence follows because you're saying, wait a minute, you can do this, it's important, what's the problem? So the way that we define confidence really is that it is staying aligned with your values. Now earlier, I said, you know, life happens. We gave some examples, life happens. And so there are gonna be times where even though you say, boy, today I'd really like to be with my kids, but I have to work. Or today I'd really like to do X, but I have to do something else. So your values are here and you have to do something that's over here. If you're making deliberate decisions, conscientious, mindful decisions, and you're, you're saying, this is what's of value to me, but it's also important to me that I get this done, and you do that with mindfulness, then your confidence stays at that nice high level. And that's what we call core confidence. Um, we borrowed that term from the athletes because core confidence really is a deeper level and it's kind of really in your gut where you're saying to yourself, you know what, uh, as much as I want to stay here, I need to do this for this reason and I'm good with that. Turns out the people who have core fitness or core confidence in our case actually are healthier because when they make those mindful decisions, there's no regret, there's no anxiety. So it is a, a strength of from within that allows you to remain, in a, you know, to get back to the confident state quickly because you're really strong from within. It's fascinating. We're learning from the athletes. I love that piece of some of your research. Uh, a lot, of it. and I really wanted you uh, kind of to expand on the definition. A lot of people will say it's a feeling. I don't feel confident. Is confidence? A, what, how would you describe that for people? Well, you're absolutely right. People do say it's a feeling or a state, right? And it is not, it's a thought. And we know that it is a thought because um, not only can we see um, the thought being processed through things like functional MRIs, but we, in psychological terms, they call it a metacognitive thought. So think of it this way, Jody. I will take um, this lovely pen that's on my desk and it's a silver pen. So when I look and I say, ah, oh, it's silver, I am making a thought in my head somewhere. I'm deducing that it's silver. When I go and I say, yep, it's absolutely silver. I'm going to tell Jody that it's silver. I have actually layered another thought about I'm confident. Now, confidence, if you look in the dictionary, whether you're talking about consumer confidence or confidence in the market or confidence in anything, it's associated with the word certainty, that you're certain. And that certainty is that second thought. So I go, yeah, it's it's. So I think it's silver. Yeah, no, it's definitely silver. So it is a thought. And so if you think about confidence as being a thought, can you say to yourself, I'm going to think confidently, I'm going to think confidently? Actually, you can. I mean, it sounds almost crazy. But you can start to tell yourself on a regular basis, you know what, I can do this. I can do this job. I can do this job. And eventually, you will start training your brain to go to that place first. So when you hear people, I'm sure in your coaching session, they, you know, every excuse under the sun, I can't do this, or I didn't do this because, yeah, it's a little bit of that neural reprogramming that needs to happen because it's their brain basically allowing them off the hook. And so when you say, no, you know, I'm not going to let myself off the hook, I'm not going to let my client off the hook, I'm going to bring all that to the front of the pack right here where that logic and that uh, rationalization lives and I'm going to allow myself to be very very conscientious about I can do this yeah you actually really do create a neural pathway that creates a thought I love the example you shared with the pen because it me you, you absolutely know it's gray and it's a pen it's that knowing and I think as as people with a whole bunch of baggage or experiences or insecurities, whatever it is, I think it, would you say being confident as a thought comes to that next elevation of? 
Wow, that's a that's a big question. So when we interviewed um, back when I started in the institute with my business partner, who's a fellow Canadian, so she's one of your neighbors. Um, we we interviewed I don't know how many in the end over forty neuro related experts. So some neurologists and neuroscientists and and uh, uh, just all kinds of individuals that were really studying the way the brain works. And the one thing that they all said consistently. It was kind of surprising to me then, it's still surprising years later to me, is that when you appreciate that you control your thoughts, then you control your thoughts. And they said, think about it like you have a super admin, administrative like account in your head, you know? One of my favorite movies is the Disney movie Inside Out, and I don't know if you remember it, it's a Jorah, it's an animated movie, and the, 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 the movie premises there's a young girl who moves, her family moves to a new, um, neighborhood in a whole different place, new school, new everything. And she's completely, utterly, she's hard, she's just depressed. She, she's sad. She can't make friends. The whole thing is just really sad. And then the critters in her head are the different emotions. And they basically get her to a point where she's confident enough to go and do what she needs to do to acclimate. And that's the movie. And they explain in the movie how memories work and all this. But what I really admire, and I use this all the time in my workshops, is the fact that the critters are standing behind a little control panel, right? They're like controlling her brain, right? And I'm like, that's exactly what it is. Like you have to take stewardship, like captainship of your own brain. And when you do that, again, the neuroscience told me this is not something hooey that I made up. But when you say, you know what? I'm in control of my brain, not the other way around. You're already halfway there, right? That you're pulling that kind of logic into the place that you actually do get to control it. Instead of letting your body and your reactions control stuff, you are being proactive and deliberate. And that was what the neuroscience has said is the number one thing that people need to know. It's very exciting to me that the neuroscience research you're doing is bringing into the fact it makes us accountable. Also puts us, but it, it's saying like it's not what's happened to us. It's not our background. It's not what we haven't done or where we're at in our life that we have ownership in our thoughts and, and we can become more confident and pause for a second in our discussion and then keep going and see some questions. I ask the people watching, if you have any questions, we're going to, I'm going to ask Alyssa now how we can grow and elevate our confidence. Like if things we could do right away, uh, how can we do that? Whether it's for your career, you guys have a specific question. Uh, I know some of you are, are teachers and parents and um, you, you help clients, your coaches, you may be seeking a new career or going for interviews. And I know you that. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comment box for Alyssa and myself. Um, so do that now. And then Alyssa, I'm going to ask you, what are some, if someone says, well, you know what confidence is? It's an area I want to work on going for interviews and I don't feel that confident because I've been struggling to get a job and it's you know, taking me down or I haven't taken that step in my business, my confidence is shaken. How can I work on it? What are some steps? Well, okay, so some steps. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Jody. The video is a little choppy, so forgive me that. Um, I think, well, let's put it into two buckets. There's kind of things that are quick hits, right? And I'm not, absolutely not a believer that you could fake it till you make it. But there are some quick hit things that you can do to kind of bring it up. And then longer term, bigger things. Um, that I, I want to touch on, but of course, those are kinds of things that you have to really make a commitment to kind of learn more about and do. So quick hit things, things that you can do. Um, first and foremost is every day you see somebody that you go, oh, they're confident because we know it when we see it. That's one thing that everyone grows up. We know it when we see it. We know confidence is good, but we also can recognize it. And so subsequently notice it and notice what that person is doing. Are they walking or talking a certain way, dressing a certain way? And being mindful of that not only mirrors it into your brain, which is really important, but it starts to really build almost a catalog for you of how you want to behave. That you can emulate that behavior. And again, it's not fake it, you make it. It is literally learning how to be more confident. And it could be something as subtle as sitting up, which we know Amy Cuddy's work or not, whether you love it or hate it. The reality is when people sit up, they feel more confidently. The people on the other side of the table look at them more confidently. Um, speaking with a full voice, not in a soft voice, those kinds of things. So emulating people that you know, 
um, that you or you recognize as confident, even if you don't know them, maybe somebody on the train, whatever. And then by the same token, looking for people who are not confident in your world and going, oh, I do not want to do that. So it's more than saying, I don't want to be like that person. It's what is that person doing that makes me think that they're not confident and so I don't do those things. That's so like the, the quickest hit, right? Yes. Okay, great. That's a great app. Excellent. Is there any anything else in terms of working that thought muscle as well? For sure. And again, you know, this kind of crosses that line because part of what the athletes train to do and it doesn't happen overnight is really be in a mindful state, like visualize, close your eyes, visualizing, go, okay, what's going on in my head? What's really bothering me? If you look at the Olympics or you watch any professional sports um, these days, there's mindful coaches or or they call them emotional coaches. There's a, a raft of different names, but their job is to talk to the athletes and really get whatever is that noise in their head. Maybe they had a bad night's sleep or they had a fight with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is to at least identify it and be like, okay, you know what? It's bothering me, but I got to take it out of my brain, so to speak, put it aside, focus on the interview, focus on the dive, focus on the presentation, whatever that high performance moment is and really, not let that noise get in the way of that frontal activity, right? I gotta be all brains on deck. So that's really is something that, that, again, the athletes train. It's hard for me to say it's, you can learn it like this because you can't, but at the same time, it starts with mindfulness. And I, you know, that word for a lot of years, I used to be like, eh. It, it really is a matter of understanding what's going on in your brain. So we have some tools, we have methods that we teach, as you know, at the Institute, the workshops and the keynotes that I do, I bring some of those. And it's really a matter of kind of looking across the different aspects of life and going, okay, where am I good? What do I not have to worry about? What are the areas I need to worry about? And what am I gonna do about them? Once you put that action plan, it's essentially taking the control and I'm gonna take control of that, your confidence goes up. It's very it's much very like how used to exercise, exercise crushing, crushing, crushing something, something that we exercise. <laughs> Every day. Yep. It's part of it. I, you know, I think a lot of what happens again is we go through life and we're busy and we're on the beautiful, you know, cell phones, texting and doing everything. And we don't pay attention sometimes to the noise that's in our head or maybe what our priorities, our values need to keep us, you know, a little bit more in, in the box, so to speak. So at, after a day long, you're like, oh, you know, like I didn't get anything done today or I did something and I regret it because it was a bad use of time or whatever it is. And that is draining our confidence, not just our cell phone batteries, but literally our brain batteries. So that's part of what this exercise is about is really taking that two minutes, five minutes and going, OK, let's take an inventory of our life. Where are we? Are we good? Are we need to, what do we need to do? You know, one of the exercises I do when I do um, some of my workshops is I have people write what I call a eulogy. Why you? O-L-O-G-Y, because mm -hmm. the idea is to really define what's important to you at a very value, high level, but value-based statement. And I say mm -hmm. to people, that's your compass. That's the thing when you go at night, you look at it and you go, did I accomplish that? You know, it's not a matter of did I do the laundry and pay the bills, did I do that? Did I do the things that I want to be known for that are important to me? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's part of the, you know, building that kind of checkpoint confidence that we talked about. That's fabulous. fabulous. And I know because the coaching course with Kirsten of what confidence for people is, and you shared one recently. Can you kind of just share what it's done for people? The the ability to be able to build one of those stories that you had had shared with all of us. Sure. And I got to ask you. I can see on my screen my. I have this line of sun and I keep moving over this way, but I think I'm cutting my face off a little bit. So I'm now I'm going to be striped. It's going to be fabulous. I, I warned you this might happen. I, no matter where I'm in my office in the afternoon, I get this uh, zebra effect. But um, so the impact, yes, of, of course. So part of it is really, um, you know, I don't, here's another word that kind of gives me a little itch, which is strategic. It's when you want to go for, say, that next job. I work with a lot of people to get them from their current job level to the next level. We call that career acceleration. And so it's not just like trying to be confident and say the right things and do the right things when they happen. It's actually rolling back and saying, okay, what do I want to do? Why? How do I get there? What, what do I think is required? And then really thinking through how am I going to do it? And role playing even, we do a lot of role playing on things that could happen. 
Because just like an athlete, and we'll use that again as an analogy, military are the same and C-suite execs do the same, is if it never happens, great, but I am prepared when it does. Right. So I may never have to. And some of you may never ask me that horrible question. But it, what if they do? I, I'm a marketer. That's my background is marketing. Right. When we would do uh, public relations training for executives and people, we would drill them with all kinds of questions. That's what the politicians do. That's what anyone who speaks to the media, because you never know the question you're going to get. So part of it is present. You know, it's being prepared with the answer. But part of it is being cool under fire where you say, yeah, no, I, I know how to answer this in your head. And so you answer it with calm and coolness. It almost doesn't matter what comes out of your mouth. It matters how you present it. So a lot of the, um, again, the people that we, we work with, um, they, they want to go from you know, point A to point B in their career. Great. Well, why? What? How are we going to do it? What are the possible things that can happen? You know, who are the people that need to be talked to? And then let's build out those scenarios. So it's good old-fashioned strategy, preparation, and practice. And we are going to wrap up soon, but there was a really powerful thing you shared with me and some of the other coaches about how com if you have confidence. So if, if we do what you said and we all work on our own confidence and we work on having that for ourselves and in our life, amplify it for others. And you also mentioned something about us having confidence. It also builds competence in others as well. Do you want to speak to that a little? I mean, that's a powerful, powerful in business, in your life, wherever you are. Absolutely. And, you know, thank you for bringing that up. One of my new favorite phrases is that confidence amplifies competence because you can work really hard, you can be really smart. It doesn't get a guarantee that you're going to be successful, whatever that metric is to you, whether it is get a new job or be a great parent or, you know, the smart and hardworking stuff is just not competitive anymore, but more importantly, People will trust people, other people, when they're truly confident, right? So even in an interview like this, you know, if I was a little bit frazzled and the sound, I could, people are not going to believe it, right? So you have to not just walk the walk. But the beautiful thing about confidence, whether you're me or you as a coach, is that it's contagious. Like mm -hmm. you can give other people confidence just by being confident. Because again, if they're watching and paying attention to you as a role model, it actually seeps into their brain and will absolutely impact their behavior. So it's a wonderful, almost um, a motivator to be more confident yourself so you can impact your kids and your employees and your spouse and everybody else around you with that beautiful calm control and confidence. Uh, what I, I was thinking about there when you were talking about competent leadership it's never that the women who are leaders in their career or business that it's never a factor that they don't have the competence. It's actually more that they lack the confidence. And so by lacking the confidence and people might perceive they don't have the competence when they do, they're competent and that the, the merge or the marriage of the two is so crucial. So your work is so, so important. And, and do you want to share what you're, I know you're speaking all over the place and doing trainings uh, and do you want to share with people how they can get in touch with you or learn more about this oh thank you for that I appreciate it uh, well of course American confidence Institute.com is the Institute and my book which is behind me kick-ass confidence kick-ass hyphen confidence.com um, is a, another place you can find lots of information keynotes and workshops but one of the programs I'm really excited about that we just rolled out is this career acceleration program I mentioned before. You can participate from anywhere in the world. It's an open enrollment, so you just sign up for yourself. And it, this fall, we're doing it specifically for mid-career women. Women will be doing other sessions for other um, millennials and mid-career men and senior executives coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, but it's six weeks plus two bonus weeks if people sign up early, and they're really, really fun bonus weeks. And they get to be online with a peer group of um, you know, equals people in their same situation with similar issues and me it's for six weeks, one hour in the evening. So very convenient. And um, the way on Kickass um, Confidence website, you go in and you apply because we don't let everyone in. We really want a cohort of people who really can support and meld together. So we, we ask for a five minute application and then we interview everyone who applies and the program starting in October. So anyone who's interested, jump on. We'd love to have uh, 
um, folks from anywhere, all walks of life and anywhere in the country. But again, this one for mid-career women is very, very special, close to my heart. I suppose probably close to yours too. <laughs> That's great. I did, I shared the link for those of you on and wondering. Uh, it's in like, so you can click on that and go to it to find more information. And you have kindly offered a really, really cool uh, incentive for anyone who does want to uh, apply or take a look at that and have an interview. Asa is going to, there's her book right there, is going to give you a free a copy, digital copy of her, her kick-ass confidence. You want to show that one more time? Of course, I'll put it in that natural spotlight. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah, anyone who does apply and, and um, lets us know that you saw this um, broadcast, I'm happy to send you a digital copy. And um, as Jody, as you know, it's chock full of tools and tips. And it's a short, it's a really small read, literally, an uh, hour or two, maybe two um, tops. But it, you know, everything you need to know about confidence, hopefully, is tucked in there. Okay. And for is interested and wants to learn more about Alyssa's work is the neuroscience behind it and the research which they're going to benefit from. I know a lot of people are wanting to find out how they can and maybe that's not the right word get more mind thoughts. Uh, so I just I thank you so much for coming on the Leaders Lounge today and sharing your information and uh, I know people are going to want to learn more about you and what you're doing so you can find more at the AmericanConfidenceInstitute.com. I'm going to share that link as well. And uh, we, we may be doing a, a few. Post your questions. Post your comments. If there's any other questions right now, let us know. Uh, a little so we'll answer should they get answered later as well. If there's anything more you want to know about it or want to know more about the neuroscience, we'll see if we can squeeze her in in her busy schedule. She'll come back to the Leaders Lounge. Thank you so much Alyssa today. Oh thank you Jody. Thank you everyone for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Have an amazing weekend everyone. Go off go out there and have some kick-ass confidence. <laughs> okay.